Today we're reviewing Mountain Dew Game Fuel Mango Heat Flavor, brought to you by Q. Before we do that thing that we always do at the beginning of every video, hey, please share this video because apparently YouTube has chosen not to share our videos anymore or acknowledge we exist. New algorithm. It'll take a couple weeks to straighten out, and if you know they haven't starved us off YouTube by then, we'll still be making videos. So please, share this video. Now that thing I always do. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Greg. He's Q together with Mr. Happy 0121. And today, we're drinking Mountain Dew. I'm sure that's unprecedented for this channel. Pretty new. Mountain Dew. Game Fuel Mango Heat. Now I'm just saying words randomly and they hopefully fit into a sentence. Do you have any preconceived notions of the mango heat flavor? None at all. I'm afraid I do. I'm not a fan of mango flavor on anything. We did the Taco John's uh, Mango Mountain Dew a while back. Now that was where they made it themselves in store. The mango overwhelmed the dew and I was not pleased. I'm not ever happy when someone overwhelms the dew. You ready to break into this? Yes. All right, let's score this thing. Here we go. Drink two. The all important, ever decisive drink three. What grade do you give the Mountain Dew Game Fuel Mango Heat Flavor? An 85. What did you like? The mango taste. What did you dislike? It's it's really, really, really sweet, so I guess that's kind of a negative. I'm gonna give it an 85 as well. It's better than I thought it would be. And the mango mixes in this better than the Taco John's product that we had. And better than the mango Mountain Dew we made at home. But, and you know, when we made the do-it-yourself mango Mountain Dew, we legit had no clue this existed. It was just serendipity. The very thing that you like about this is the very thing that would get old with me very quick. Like a 12-pack of this, throwing it in the mix would be great. It doesn't have the continued drinkability of a Code Red or any other Mountain Dew product that has stayed on the market. It tastes too sweet. The mango's too much. As a one-off, I think it's pretty good. But it will never, ever be the greatest, in my opinion, Mountain Dew flavor ever. Citrus cherry flavor. Now, for those of you out there going, Greg, you've already reviewed this. Yes, I have. I don't know if you remember this, but this product, from me, is the highest graded product that we have ever reviewed out of 700 something reviews. I gave this like the Platinum 100 Plus. You did? I hoarded this when it came out. Now I saw a lot of people online saying a lot of negative things about the citrus cherry flavor. I can't believe they brought it out again. Every time the game fuel comes up, they bring out the citrus cherry flavor. I don't like rainbows or unicorns. Uh. So I thought, you know, it's been six months now since I've had the chance to taste my love. Just for shits and giggles, over on the Mr. Dark channel, we're going to review this again. I'm going to see if it holds up. It'll only be like the third time in history we've reviewed the same product twice. But it's interesting to see over a year or two if maybe my mind has changed. So tomorrow on the Mr. Dark channel, Come check out a retro review as we review this again. So let's see what's going on in the world. Uh, there's there's a presidential election. Debate. There's a debate. There's a debate. Tonight. There's clowns. Let's talk about clowns because, honestly, if we're talking about the debate, aren't we really talking about clowns anyway? <laughs> that was like a David Letterman joke. <laughs> yeah. You told me that you personally would not have any fear whatsoever of a clown coming out of the woods at you. No. I, I, <laughs> I would love to just heckle one. I, I think that's what every clown needs, is just a group of people heckling it. Because I think you're a loser. If you're, if you're going to put on a clown mask and try and waste your time scaring people. Anybody within the sound of my voice that wants to dress up like a clown and come scare the hell out of him, please do so. You and I differ on this point. I am not scared of clowns. In under normal circumstances, if I'm at a fair or a circus, two places you'll never see me, by the way. 
My grandfather owned a carnival, and I want nothing to do with any of that. Just a quick tangent. Most fair rides are not well kept up, no matter how many stickers they stick on it saying it's been checked over by someone. The Ferris wheel in most cases is held up by one single pin that only gets replaced like once a year. You're taking your life in your hands, not to mention your ride is probably being run by a tweaker. Just saying. Anyway, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> but where you and I disagree on the clown thing is this. It's not the idea that they're clowns. It's the idea that someone has taken the time to put the makeup on, put the little stupid suit on, and then walk out into the woods purely to mess with people. That is a special level of commitment. I barely want to put slippers on to go check the mail. I ain't painting my face up, putting on a little clown suit, driving somewhere, going out in the woods to scare people. That person is a sick freak. Or a harmless loser. Man, harmless losers. I'm one of those. I'm a harmless loser. And I'm going to tell you, I ain't getting painted up and going out in the woods to scare nobody. And I really think, you know, if it's me and somebody knocks on my door in the dead of night and they're not just dressed like friendly clowns, they're dressed like evil clowns. It's just a matter of time, kind of like the Pokemon Go thing that we talked about. Oh, yeah. Somebody, one of these fools is going to get a pickaxe between the eyes. Or shot. Or shot or stabbed or set on fire. Or ran over. And there should be a defense that, like, if someone comes out of the woods dressed as a scary clown with the intention of jacking with you and you kill them. Especially if, like, they're holding, like, a knife or something. I could... Right. Totally. It should be the clown defense. All these idiots grabbing kids out of the woods. It's happened, like, way more than it should. Where, the, I, you know, I don't know they don't have the intention to hurt the kid because, in most cases, the kid gets away. But they're grabbing the kid with the intention to scare them. That's not cool. Yeah, you've heard of the Twinkie defense. It's a thing. Go go Google that. Well, there should be the clown defense. If someone's dressed like a clown and they come out of the woods and they look scary, you should just be able to off them. I also feel like 90% of those videos are fake. Like the clown sighting ones. Yeah. I feel like a good handful of them are just completely fabricated. I think so, too. Um, but I'm not even going off videos anymore. You can go on to, like, MSN or Yahoo or anything, and there's reports now, lots of reports, with no video. That makes it even more real to me as a, in a lot of cases there's no video. There's the one housing project, I want to say it's in North Carolina, I'm sure somebody will set me right, where people have been seeing clowns come out of the woods for weeks. Weeks trying to grab kids that are playing in and around the housing project. I guarantee you there ain't no clowns in the ghetto. I bet you there ain't no people dressed like clowns in Memphis or Houston or Compton or Detroit. I want to see the Detroit clown. That's Chicago. The, yeah, I want to see the clown in downtown Detroit trying to scare people. You want to impress me, clown, go do that. Coming out of the woods and scaring some yokels like us, that's not real impressive. We're a cowardly, superstitious lot, otherwise we wouldn't be hiding in the butthole of the world. Go into the streets of Detroit and scare somebody. Do that. And film it, because we would enjoy seeing it. Although you know, technically... The ICP has been doing that for decades. They have. Somebody was going to say it, so I had to say it. That's how tough they are. They can, yeah. dress, they can dress like clowns in Detroit. And juggalos. Yes. So. Whoop, whoop. Is that their... That's why their you don't mess with those people. Today is a two-for-one deal. It's a shout-out to a father and son. I'm going to do my best to get the name right. So here we go. Facebook shout-outs. Help us get to 600 likes, because I haven't looked at the counter in a while. Michael Whitting Sr. and Michael Whitting Jr. Michael, I really hope I got your last name right. That's the only way I can see to pronounce Whitting. Because there's no E, so it's not Whiting, it's Whitting. Sr. and Jr. enjoy watching the show. They enjoy our antics and our good-natured fun. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Ryan Watts. Ryan Watts is an interesting one. He came real close to getting the uh, no shout out. I love enthusiasm, but you know, we always explain it does take, like, there, believe it or not, there is a little bit of a list because we don't do them every day and there's, it, whatever. Ryan fell into the category of very excited to get a shout out and asked me about it quite often. 
So here's your shout out, Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. We'll say it a lot because he worked hard to get it. Ryan Watts. Ryan Watts. Ryan Watts. Thanks, Ryan Watts. There's your shout out. There you go. When you wait that long and you're that excited, we say your name a lot. Ryan Watts. Ryan Watts. Ryan Watts. Rye and Watts. Ryan Watts. Okay, I think we've beat that to uh, death. If you're seeing this, we appreciate it. You worked hard because YouTube's not helping us. So instead of liking, commenting, and subscribing, you can do all those things, but please share this video until YouTube decides to take the chains off of us. Take the chains off, YouTube. Bring us back to what we once were. Until next time, stay vigilant. And we're on social media too. Mr. Happy0121, Facebook. I almost called it Snatchbook. Snapchat. Snatchbook. Lord Snatchbook. I don't know, but if somebody doesn't have Snatchbook copyrighted, we should totally make that. Yeah. Who wouldn't? If someone said, hey, there's a new site called Snatchbook, you're not going to check that out? I don't know. Copyright Mr. Happy0121, Snatchbook. Look for us there when it's invented. Just think, we could have our picture on there. You, you're too young to get this. The guy from uh, MySpace, Tom, he created the website. And so, like, whenever you became friends on, whenever you um, joined MySpace, your first friend was always the guy that created the website. Oh, that's cool. And it had his little profile picture, Tom. It was sideways. Tom had like eight gabillion friends because you just friended Tom yeah. when you went on. So yeah, we could be like the modern day Tom of Snatchbook. It'd be you and me going, 